chat. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7 tonight. I know Pastor Howell isn't here, but I would like to thank him for this opportunity just to speak to you guys. I don't take it lightly, but you want, I also want to thank you guys for all the time that you invested in me, whether it was directly or indirectly. Just being here at this church really changed my life, seeing the love that you guys have for God and have for others. And like Pastor, Pastor Scott said, the gospel does work. Amen. Just even thinking back, uh, Mr. Joel Allen just coming to my house consecutively. This is something I don't. It's something I don't take lightly. I think about it every single day of just how God had a plan for my life and just the way He's directing me to come back here and to help and to serve with you guys has been an absolute blessing. And then the Lord being uh, the Lord opening the door in Oklahoma just to work at a church to do what He's called me to do, work in youth ministry. It's, it's, it's amazing just to see the hand of God working Amen. and just the prayers of his people. Yeah. Because I know even when I was at Bible college, when I growing up here, even at Bible college, and even to this day, I know you guys pray for me, and I just thank you for it. So Luke chapter 7, starting with verse 36, the Bible reads, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both, Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said, and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman, I entered to thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved, mu loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said, unto the, he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Now, I don't, if you're a note taker, if, if you're taking notes, the title of this message is going to be Extraordinary Love. This woman here, we see, it says that she was a sinner. She was known in the city. She was known, she wasn't a faith, her name wasn't known for good. To be honest, she probably... From what, I, from what I've read and what I've, what I've seen is she was a harlot in the city. She was known by everyone. But you know what? We see here that this, the, the, this invitation, this party that this Pharisee invited Jesus to, she had so much love for, for Jesus, for God, that she was willing to do anything to have her sins forgiven. Now I want to look at three factors of this extraordinary love here, but let's pray before we get into it. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you just for the opportunity you've given me, Lord, just to, sit, to come here, Lord, and to preach your word. Lord, help me only to say what you want said. Lord, help this message, Lord, to help someone today. In your name I pray, amen. You know, we all love someone, whether it's an aunt, an uncle, a mom, a dad, a kid, a brother. We all love, we all love someone but in different ways. We all love someone. What I want to ask you is, how is your love for Christ? 
Where's your love at for Christ? Because everyone can claim that they love Jesus. Everyone can claim that. But where is your love? Where is it at? How is it? I told you I want to look at the three factors of this extraordinary love that we've seen here by this woman. First, we see the place. We see that this Pharisee named Simon invites Jesus to, this, to, to eat with him to a party at his house. You know, I don't, I don't believe it was just Jesus he invited. I, I think he invited other Pharisees, other, other Pharisees' friends he had to come and say, hey, I invited Jesus over. Hey, you come over too. He didn't just invite Jesus. It was probably a bunch of people he invited. But you know what? I don't think he invited Jesus there to love and glorify him. I believe this Pharisee invited Jesus over to question him and try to trip him up in any way that, he, any way that they could. They wanted to invite, he wanted to invite him over for some type of entertainment for him and his friends. It wasn't so that he can, he can say, praise to God, thank you for coming, Jesus. I believe in you. I want, you for, I want to ask you to forgive me for my sins. He thought, no, that's not why he asked him to come. I believe he asked him to come for an entertainment reason, a self-centered reason of, I need some entertainment for my friends, so hey, let me invite Jesus so we can question him, try to trip him up. This should be fun. But you want that invitation that this Pharisee extended to Jesus, I believe got around town. Everybody was talking, hey, did you hear Simon? He invited Jesus over to his house. Hey, did you know Simon? Hey, he invited Jesus over to his house. And you want know this woman caught word of it, and she thought to herself, you want know if Jesus is over there, I need to get there. If Jesus is at this Pharisee's house, I need to get there. Just like if you had, <laughs> if you had some big name in sports or you had some, some famous celebrity over your house, you want, at some point in time, there's going to be some people knocking at your door saying, hey, how's it going? They find out your address, they're like, hey, how's it going? Um, I heard you have so-and-so over your house. Is there a way I can maybe sneak a selfie with them or is there a way I can get, his, get this person's autograph? People are going to, the, the news is going to get around that, th that you have somebody over your house. You know what? News got around that this Pharisee Simon had Jesus at his place. So there was the place, but there's also the person. Jesus was the main attraction for this party, for this Pharisee, because I told you, like I said, he didn't, he didn't invite him over to love and glorify him and praise his name. No, he didn't invite him for that. He invited him to entertain him and his guests. But just like he was a main attraction for this Pharisee and his friends as entertainment, you know what? He was a main attraction for this woman as well because she knew that he was the one that she needed to go to to get her sins forgiven. She knew that he was God and man at the same time. She knew that he was the Messiah. She knew exactly who he was and she knew she needed to get to him. The Pharisee, like I said, wanted to try to trip him up, have him make some mistakes so that they can claim him as a false prophet, as a false, as a false witness. We you know what this woman's reason, like I said, was to seek repentance for her sins. She was known as a harlot. I'm sure, I'm sure she heard about the miracles that Jesus performed. I'm sure she heard about the miraculous things that he did. And she said, you know what? I need to get to him. He's the person I need to get to. I need to get to this Pharisee's house, but I also need to get to Jesus. He's the one I need to see. These Pharisees always, there's always some, if you're in some, some position of leadership, there's always going to be those people that love you and those people that hate you. There's going to be those that criticize you that try to put you down, put your, slander your name, whatever. They try, and then there's those people that love you, that praise you. But when she arrived at, when she arrived at this Pharisee's house, we see that she began to cry. 
Verse, 30, verse 37, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat with the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. When she got there, when she got to the Pharisee's house, immediately she began to cry. To be honest, these tears are probably tears of excitement, of joy. But you know what? These tears were tears because she was broken because of her sin. She was broken because of the sin she's, been, she has, she's committed. She wiped his feet with her tears because of her brokenness for sin. She wiped his feet with her hair as one who is entirely devoted to his honor. She kissed his feet as one unworthy. These kisses were kisses of adoration and affection. She anointed his feet with ointment, recognizing him to be the Messiah, the anointed one. One of these people, the, the Pharisee, sought to tear Jesus down, while this woman sought to love and to glorify Jesus for who he is. So there's the place, there's a place that both of them, had, that Jesus was at the center, the, the center point to be, be with Jesus, the place, this Pharisee's house, there was the place, there's the person that she wanted to get to and the person he wanted to use as entertainment. But you want, there's the pardon, there's the forgiveness that this woman was seeking. And starting in verse 39, this Pharisee said, this Pharisee saw this woman. He, like I said, she was known around the town. So as soon as he caught her eye, he, he knew exactly who she was. This Pharisee thought in his mind, you know, if Jesus knew exactly who this woman is, who this, what this woman has done, he wouldn't even let her near him. You know what Jesus said? You know what? Answering, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And Simon, wanting to entertain it, said, you know what, master, say on. Go on, tell, tell, me, tell me what you got to say. Tell me, what, tell me what's, what's on your mind. Jesus knew exactly what, this, what, what Simon, this Pharisee, was thinking about this woman and started to reprove him. Because the Pharisees followed the law and they did a lot of, they did a lot of just good works on the outside, he thought, you know what? This woman, is no, this, woman, this woman does not deserve to be here among my presence. He did not want her there because he knew exactly who she was. She doesn't, he, in his mind, this Pharisee's like, this woman does not deserve to be here. Matthew 23, 25 tells us Jesus rebuking the scribes and Pharisees, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Jesus first starts out with a parable about the two debtors and the, cre and the creditor. Then Jesus goes on to tell Simon the things that he neglected to do as a host, as hosting Jesus in his home. These were things of Jewish tradition as if you were to have a guest in your house, you were to do these things, give them water for their feet, give them, give them, um, give them a kiss and also give them oil to anoint their heads. Well, like I said, Jesus goes on to tell him the things he neglects to do and the things that the woman has done in place of the things he decided not to do. He also goes on to tell Simon about the love that she has for him because of the many sins she knows she has and those sins that she knows she needs to get forgiven. He tells Simon, those who are, for, who are forgiven little, love little. So in other words, Simon, because you aren't seeking forgiveness, because you don't see, think you need to be forgiven for anything, you love little. You think, because, you think you have no sin. You think you're perfect because you follow the law and you do these things outwardly so other people can see you. You think you're great, you're grand, you, you think you're fine. You think you don't, you don't need forgiveness. You don't need, you don't need me to come and save you, which that's what Jesus came to do, to seek and to save that which was lost. You don't need me, so why, in his mind, why should, I, why should he love Jesus? Simon, those who are forgiven little, love little. 
But those who are forgiven much love much. Jesus told this Pharisee, you want this woman whose sins were many, did not see her wiping her my feet with her tears, with her hair, kissing my feet, anointing my feet with this precious ointment. She did not see that as an inconvenience, but as something little she can do to show her love for me. Something small she can do to show her love for me because she's seeking that forgiveness. He also tells Simon, Simon goes on to speak, Simon and his Pharisee friend goes on to speak among themselves, just like they did in Luke 5, 21, speak among themselves, who is this man who can forgive sins? Who is this man that says he can forgive, the, forgive people's sins? But this woman, she knew exactly who he was. He was the Messiah, the anointed one, the one that came to save her from her sins. And she knew she needed to get to him. When you owe a debt that you can't afford to pay and someone asks for a small favor, you're always the one, the first jump to it. You're ready to do, you're ready to do whatever they need. You know what, there's, there's a family in this church, because like I said, you guys have been a blessing to me ever, ever since I joined this church. There's a family in the church. I was, at, I was at college my senior year, and we had to graduate. In order to graduate, in order to walk, our bill had to say zero. Mine did not. <laughs> so I had a dilemma on my hands. I called my mom. I said, hey, you know, it's my, this coming up to graduation. I'm, if I want to walk, I have to get my bill to zero. She said, you know what? Hey, let's pray about it. We'll figure it out. We'll find something. So a family in this church graciously gave the money that I needed to graduate and my bill to be zero. And you know what? When I got back, if they needed anything, I was at their beckoning and call. I'm like, hey, you need me to organize some cans? I'm there. You need me to do this? You need me to put some bo- tear up some boxes? I'm there. I'm, hey, you need me at 2 in the morning? I'm there. You know what? They paid a debt I couldn't afford to pay. Jesus did that same thing for every single one of you. He paid a debt we could not afford. He, he died on the cross for our sins. We couldn't pay that debt. He had to. So I ask you again, how's your love for Christ? There's this Pharisee. He had a self-serving love of he wanted to use Jesus for some entertainment for his friends. But then you have this, this woman, this harlot, who had a selfless love, a genuine love for Christ, who wanted to to love and worship him at his feet. How's your love? How's your love for Christ today? Do you seem it too much to go out soul winning when he's asked you to? Do you find it an inconvenience to serve in a ministry where you can serve and glorify him? Do you find it too much to do anything for Christ? How's your love for Christ? Because if you love him, because he's forgiven you much, if you love him as much as he's forgiven you, no matter what it is, you're ready to go. You're ready. Hey, hey, you need me? I'm the first one there. Oh, you need somebody for soul? Hey, I'm here. I may have worked a, a graveyard shift, but you know what? Hey, I'm here. You need, a, you need somebody to substitute in a Sunday school class? Hey, pick me. I want to serve. I want to help. But I'm not doing it for me. It's doing it for him because I love him. Amen. Amen. How's your love for Christ. We have 
the same place here, this church, the same person, Jesus, who we meet, who we, who we seek to meet here at church. But have you really thought about the forgiveness that he extends to you and the love he shows to you by dying on the cross, do you show that same love back to him? Do you have the genuine love for him as this woman did? She didn't see it as an inconvenience to get down and to wash his feet with, his, with her tears, with her hair, to kiss his feet, to anoint his feet with this precious ointment. She didn't see it as something that was inconvenient, something that was unreasonable. She saw it as something small she could do for someone she loved so much. How about you? How about you? Do you find some tasks a little unreasonable to do for Christ? When the church needs, when we're, when the church is setting up for, trying to pick up for a big day, set up for a big day, do you find it, uh, that's, that's not really in my schedule, so I'm going to just head home. When there's a time to volunteer for something, uh, well, I got work, I got to get the kids to, got to get the kids to bed, I got to cook dinner, I got, I got to do all these things. Or are you... God, I love you. I know you died for me. Hey, this doesn't seem unreasonable for me. Hey, I can help. Hey, I can, I can help. I can go out. I can teach because I love him. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you just for your word. God, I pray that you help us as we go throughout our lives, throughout our, throughout our day, throughout our lives, Lord, that as we seek to serve you, we do it because we love you. We don't see it as an inconvenience, Lord, something that we can just add on to our lives. But Lord, we see it as we want to show our genuine love for you because of the forgiveness you extend to us. God, I pray that you help these people to, to, to really genuinely love you and want to serve you. With our heads bowed, our eyes closed. He kept asking the question, where is your love for Christ or how is your love for Christ? You know, we, do we have a selfless worship? Do we love God? Paul said, the love of Christ constraineth us. I thought it was a very great point that much was given for us we have a love and a burden to give to Christ. Who would say tonight, Pastor, as Brother Clarence preached tonight, the Lord convicted me about my love for Christ and what I do for him. Pray for me. Is there anybody like that? Amen. 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 Who else? Amen. Is there anybody here who would say, you know, uh, I've never known the love of Christ. If I die today, I don't know for sure I'd go to heaven. But I'd sure like to know, pray for me. Is there anybody like that? Would you raise your hand so we can pray for you? All right, would you stand with me in just a moment? I'm going to pray. And if the Lord spoke to your heart, you come. Lord, we sure do need you. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for everything that you do in our lives. Lord, I pray that we would take that love that you gave us and that we give it back to you. Be with this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.